Uh, a new season of F1 action is set to get underway here from Austria. New faces this year join the grid. Ollie Behrman, Jamie Chadwick and Zane Maloney. Which rookie will impress the most? My bets are on Behrman. Also new for this weekend, Bridgestone have brought an experimental tyre to test this weekend and other upcoming weekends that is meant to create more strategy for these races. OK, Gary and team, no prisoners this year, win at all costs. Yep, 10-4. Uh, this is our year. A new season is underway, the final season of our F123 driver career mode, and it started out with news immediately. Bridgestone bringing an experimental tire in round one, three, and five for the start of this season to give us an indication of where to go for the rest of the season. So here in Austria to kick off this brand new season of F123, we are using a Bridgestone tire that is going to force everybody into a either two or three stop strategy. I know you guys have been asking for different strategies and obviously there's not a way to do it in the base game, uh, you know, outside of the, the bare bone strategies they give you. So we have a mod now that basically it doesn't make the tire wear quicker. It makes the grip go away quicker. So you're you're going to have to be forced into a pit stop to have more grip basically uh, and this is going to create two stop strategies and three stop strategies uh, when this tire is used. We were uh, pretty happy with the car in practice. It's supposed to be a nice dry weekend to kick off the season so we're going to get a really good test for this car as we roll through into before qualifying looking at here's where the R&D stands. As you can see every team dropped with this regulation change going into this V10 uh, engine era uh, but no teams were able to make a leap forward so it will be interesting to see which teams can regain that ground lost first and I think they will be the team that kind of has an early season uh, advantage here as we roll through into qualifying of course new faces on the grid this season new teams on the grid of course check out the offseason video if you want to see everything new but Oliver Bierman Jamie Chadwick as well as Zane Maloney the three rookies on the grid this season here Q1 uh, was a nice cruise actually went wide and had to back out of it to make sure I didn't invalidate my time but it was okay for P11 uh, which moves us through Pierre Gas new at Mercedes this season, Leclerc new at McLaren, a lot of new faces of course at new teams, uh, but Santo Vesti, Maloney, Schumacher in his Formula 1 return, Mick Schumacher that is, and Yuki Sonoda and the BMWs out BMW, not looking hot right off the bat to kick off the season, we saw it in preseason testing, wasn't looking the most promising Q2, now underway as you guys know, qualifying never my strong suit, the AI are always stronger in the race on your AI setting or sorry, stronger in qualifying than in the race on whatever AI AI setting you actually have here. We went P10 on my first attempt in Q2. Everybody set it out for a second and final attempt. So I'm going for another quick lap here. We get to the back of George Russell and he's immediately going to ruin our lap. What a idiot, man. I mean, what is he doing? Not happy with Russell and we're going to show our displeasure immediately there alongside him, but we're going to make sure we don't do anything stupid to get ourselves a penalty. So we just move on and uh, we would still end up going quicker here uh, to go at the end of the second session and it only puts us P10 and this is probably where we're going to qualify to be honest with you. Like I said, so hard to qualify in this game. Doing Norris out in the McLaren, Chadwick out, Piastri as well at BMW and Dreddy this season alongside Liam Lawson while Leclerc for McLaren Toyota at the top of the board now to kick off Q3. Our first laps in Q3 underway. Now it's going to be interesting to see what Leclerc can do. What can Trackhouse do? Of course, a brand new lineup for Trackhouse Racing with Oliver Bierman uh, moving up from Formula 2 uh, as well. We have uh, Cali Mare moving over to Trackhouse Racing as well. Our first lap, we go P5, then uh, down to P6, and then eventually down to P9 in front of only George Russell for Mercedes. So out on track for a final attempt here to go a little bit quicker and we would end up down in p10 after russell made his lap so ghastly there in front of us in ninth place here yuri vips of course new ferrari driver right in front of us there uh we found a little bit of improvement here in sector two sector one i didn't find anything uh, we found about close to a tenth and a half so far here in the second sector now uh, just under two tenths but we lose a bunch of time here in these final couple of corners now you saw myself just turn in too early and we pay the price only one tenth gain we're gonna make another attempt here we still only go P10 here in these opening or final moments in Q3. Now at this point, we're going to find another tenth of a second, but is it going to be enough to really, you know, project us forward? We're going to have to wait and find out. A purple Sector 2, so we know the Sector 2 pace is pretty good, and through these final few corners, we find three tenths of a second, but we missed the final apex. That's going to give us up uh, a whole tenth of a second to the line. It puts us P9 here in the Austrian Grand Prix season opener. That extra tenth only would have really gotten us up 
to 8th instead of Bierman being 8th, he would have been ninth. So, Alex Albon on pole for Ferrari. We're still wondering if this is the right move, and I think that might be the answer right there. Leclerc, Drogovic there, the defending champ, Aiden Jackson, down in 5th place. Before we jump into the Grand Prix, as you guys know, now we are an official owner in Formula 2 alongside High Tech Grand Prix. High Tech Owen Racing kicks off this season. Our drivers, our roster, uh, we have Formula 3 IRL drivers, Leonardo uh, Fornaroli as well as Luke Browning alongside him in our cars this season. They got underway in Austria uh, to a solid start on this Formula 2 season. At the end of the day, it was actually Kimi Antonelli who would pick up the victory. Our drivers, uh, Fornaroli ends up fourth place while Luke Browning brings it home P7 in the Austrian Grand Prix season opener as a Formula 2 uh, owner, as you see the rest of the order on your screen there. So, a decent start to the season, some work to be done going forward, but happy with how they did. Now, we'll focus in to the season opener here from Austria. No more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal, and it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. It's one of the shortest laps on the calendar today then, with seven rights and just three lefts, making up the ten corners of this high-speed circuit. Turn two is barely a corner at all. They'll be flat out through there, a left-hand kink into the uphill braking zone of turn three. Turns one, three and four are all potential opportunities to overtake. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. What a great lap from Alexander Albon yesterday. He'll start from pole position, and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Drogovic, Gasly, Jackson, Yuri Vips, Mayer, Behrman, Golden Boy, Russell, Dewan, Norris, Chadwick, Oscar Piastri, Liam Lawson, Sato, Vesti, Maloney, Mick Schumacher and Yuki Tsunoda. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as once again we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. It is time to kick off the final season. 16 races and it all starts right here in the Austrian Grand Prix. You immediately see the new strategies with this new experimental tire for the first race, the third race, and the fifth race. We're going to be doing mediums to start, mediums at the after the first stop, and softs on the second stop. Let's see how other strategies differ. Let's get ready to roll. Here we go then, the formation lap gets underway and the excitement here is building as we near ever closer to the start of the race. Which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? Well, we'll soon find out. You see differing strategies there all throughout the grid, which we'll highlight in just a moment. So as all the cars reform the grid, the drivers will be hoping to get a strong start. They'll want to earn some valuable points from today's race, with final communications being done with their race engineers all right team thank you for the hard work uh let's have a fun uh, season together here our seventh year together mate can we finally win the title please mark's just gonna throw us under the bus here and now we're ready to roll drivers starting on the soft tire are likely to be on a three-stop strategy while drivers starting on the mediums are likely to be on a two-stop will the soft be able to be quick enough to of course uh make up for the difference of adding a whole extra pit stop we're about to find out as it's five red lights and for the first time in the final season we are lights out and racing oliver beerman right there behind his track house teammate of kelly mayor now as we don't have the best start in the world but we get back alongside george russell into turn one nearly contact with the rookie of beerman but we exit turn one clean a pretty even start throughout the whole grid actually pretty rare to see that now and to the lead it was not the pole winner of alex Albon in the ferrari it's charles leclerc in his first race with mclaren his second opportunity 
with a, of course, top tier team. Nothing ever worked out in this career mode for Leclerc and Ferrari. And then, of course, he went to track house racing and there was ups and downs there with the American team. But now he's back on top with McLaren. What can Trankhouse do this season? Of course, one win last season at Circuit of the Americas. Red Bull Ford, of course, at the time, had eight wins, seven with myself, one with Drogovic. And keep in mind, uh, Drogovic's first and only win of the season came right here last season in Austria. So we'll see what he can do right now, running in the third position, just in front of the defending champion of Aiden Jackson. McLaren have won three consecutive World Drivers Championships. However, we split them last season and we were at least able to win the Constructors Championship. And of course, departing the grid this season, the big names of Lewis Hamilton, uh, as well as Max Verstappen. Hamilton walks away from racing in general. Verstappen is moving into sports car racing, and his season will be starting in the coming episodes, which we'll be keeping tabs on now. As you can see, already lap two battles happening behind us now. This is George Russell alongside the rookie of Beerman as the Mercedes and Trankos machine go alongside these brand new V10 engines, of course, this season as well. You can hear the screaming of them at times now. We come up on this side-by-side battle here coming at the end of the second lap mayor on the left vips on the right of course now yuri vips an impressive rookie season got him the call up to the ferrari car mayor of course was rumored to be going to ferrari originally she replaced the injured verstappen last season but things didn't quite work out but now she gets the elbows out right there and she stays ahead and i'm gonna come through as well but hold on vips is gonna have drs already to start lap three and so am i cali mayor absolutely nothing there three wide in the middle she was briefly but we get ahead vips back up the inside in the Ferrari. He was strong in practice. He was strong in preseason testing, but we're not quite seeing it in qualifying or the Grand Prix. He's down to P7 while his team at Albon up in second place right now. Albon really trying to transcend this Ferrari team after what's been a miserable six seasons, really, let's be honest here, in this career mode for that team. So, Drogovic, however... Starting lap four, going to go around the outside of Albon there, up the elevation. He's going to have that run on the exit of the corner around the outside. Drogovic threw to P2, 1.8 seconds behind Charles Leclerc. Okay, mate, some news for you on these tyres. Drivers on the softs are reporting significant loss of grip already. You hear the update from Mark. Drivers on softs might be already in a bit of trouble. And, and look at the timing on the left uh, side of the screen there on the leaderboard. Gasly on the softs. We are gaining a good chunk of time on him here. 1.2 seconds. This is a corner where he's really struggling. Look at that. We just gained three, four tenths of a second. Half a second gain on Gasly. And by the end of the lap here, coming to the end of lap five, approaching lap six, we are all over the back of this Mercedes. So clearly seeing the soft tire has really good pace to start, but it falls off really quick, at least here in Austria. We breeze past the Frenchman, of course, who's got a really good opportunity this season to really step things up here. Lucky uh, that he was able to get the call up to the team from, of course, Andretti, as uh, he really didn't have a good season last time around here. As you can see, battles happening all over the place now, and it really seems like the drivers on these medium tires are starting to prevail over the drivers on the softs. Jamie Chadwick trying to put some pressure on Yuri Vips in there as well. Uh, is Jack doing all in on Oliver Behrman? I kept saying, I, I noticed by the way, I kept saying Beerman. For whatever reason, last season, the first time I saw his name, I thought it was Beerman and not Behrman. I'm working my best on correcting that because once I kind of give myself the first indication of how the name's supposed to be pronounced, it's hard for me to get away from that, but I'm going to fix it. It's Oliver Behrman. As we continue on, Callie Mayer breezes past now. Pierre Gasly on lap seven is, look at this, just cluster of cars right here. Behrman, of course, on the softs. Yuri Vips on the softs. They're going backwards while Chadwick on the mediums is going ahead. So those softs, they, they kick off strong, but they fall off just as quick as they get going. Look at this sending here by Ollie Behrman into the corner up the inside of Yuri Vips. The rookie right there is getting the elbows out right off the bat. Of course, another British driver joining the grid this season as Vips tries to continue this fight, but it's not enough. That Ferrari is struggling hard right now, as you can see over the course of all that happening. Another driver on softs dropping like a rock. Aiden Jackson. We are all over the back of Aiden Jackson and we're going to breeze past him here. We pass the defending world drivers champion and now up into fourth place to start lap eight. But we're six seconds behind the next car of Alex Albon. And look at the track map. Due to such a significant difference in tire grips that the field is getting quite spread out. 
but I expect as the race goes on, it's going to get closer towards the end, as now, Aiden Jackson is going to come into the pits here, starting at lap 9, so an early pit stop there, so he's going to put on another set of softs, so everybody that's starting on the softs appears to be locking into a 3-stop. Now, the 3-stop is likely going to be, they pit for softs now, they'll pit for softs one more time, and then their final stop will be mediums, while we start on mediums, we'll pit for another set of mediums, and then we'll pit for a set of softs to have uh, as much speed as we can at the end of this Grand Prix, but the question is as well, can the track rubber up to maybe keep those songs from losing grip early like we're seeing right now later on the race I'm not really sure Zane Maloney rookie there alongside the Red Bull Audi sister team now of course Williams uh, Audi is very close ties with our team to start this season we are closing in as well significantly on the cars in front I mean we were now only 2.3 then 1.9 seconds we have done a really good job it feels like saving tires as becoming a big thing uh, with this experimental tires we have a bit of a moment there and now the grip on my mediums were starting to go away here our pit window opens next lap here now as we have another big moment right there and immediately i say it's time to come in for some fresh rubber i need a box immediately you hear the radio call out and that's exactly what we do we head into the pits at the end of lap 12 so everybody on softs has already pitted they are going to be pitting quite soon again like we've already run halfway just about into another run on the soft tire compared to some of those other guys uh so they're trying to maximize pace at the end of this race but i think the two stop strategy is the way to go here over the three stop although they're prioritizing uh you know soft rubber and going quicker but there goes aiden jackson now so you can see the difference i mean with the grip loss that this tire brings you can gain massive amounts of time in just a couple of laps and he is three and a half nearly four seconds down the road leclerc is going to pit now from the lead at the end of lap 14 and bring albon with them Kelly mayor likely is going to pit maybe jamie chadwick as well while my teammate felipe Drogovic has remained on the racetrack so uh, as they are making their pit stops we're coming around this final turn and i was under pressure from the uh, mercedes of george russell here now as he is going to get to my inside and there he goes he'll take the position as we head down into turn number one albon exiting the pits there just in front of us as well so we've made a big gain on him in just one lap time russell with no drs we have the drs on him however and we'll swing back to the left side i want to be able to pass him immediately so we can of course try and go up there and, and get after it with handlix albon we exit the corner we'll power through and take the position back there from the british driver George Russell up ahead. Uh, Jackson trying to, of course, create as much of a gap between him and other cars, but he is not even in front of his teammate of Charles Leclerc. So he's gotten up to a net P2, but he's already on tires that are four laps, five laps worn now. So he is going to be struggling uh, to maintain pace. Drogovic now into the pits, and you see Leclerc and Jackson. They round the final turn, and you can already see Jackson is losing time to Charles Leclerc. As now, they're both going to be out in front right now of Felipe Drogovic. So Drogovic would end up third at place. So it's Leclerc, Jackson, Drogovic, Albon, myself. And, of course, Jackson on the three-stop strategy. And I'd be curious to see if he can make up enough time to be a threat at the end of this Grand Prix. Now we're starting to put some pressure on Alex Albon. We continue to close, but he's having a really solid run here so far for Ferrari. Now, as I would say, he's really a net P3. As you can see on the track map, the gap between Jackson and Leclerc is growing exponentially. Dragovic has now run down uh, Aiden Jackson here, but Jackson at the end of the same lap is going to come into the pits to, of course, try and put on another set. His third set of softs, the second pit stop of the day, of course. Mayer right there going to go through on those mediums. Gasly is in. Uh, Behrman is in as well. Let me know immediately um, following this uh, race what your thoughts are on the experimented tire. Do you like it more than the typical one-stop strategy? Is it a bit too confusing? Is it a bit too much? Let me know down below which direction we should be going for the rest of the season, but we will be using this tire at least two more times uh, in race three as well as race number five. We continue on putting some pressure to Albon, who's of course now in third place. Charles Leclerc leads the way, but if you look on the track map, He's already working his way through some lap traffic. That's how spread out things have gotten here in the closing half of this Grand Prix. As we continue to put some pressure on the back of Alex Albon, it's the two BMWs that are going a lap down as well. Schumacher as well as Yuki Sinoda. And here we go trying to get ahead of Albon in that Ferrari, but he's going to be able to stay ahead. So we'll tuck back in line behind him. But this is far from over now. We just need to stick with them. And sure enough, now down the DRS straight exiting turn one. Here's the opportunity we need. George 
George Russell now into the pits as well as Albon's going to fight back there into the corner. We continue wheel to wheel, but we're going to have the grip. We're going to have the best exit. There we go. Back into third place. Now onto the podium, but Drogovic 3.9 seconds ahead. Leclerc 7 seconds ahead. It really feels like you know, tire management is coming into a role for the first time in this F1 career mode. You're really seeing comers and goers on the same compound attire. And as this run is going on, Dragovic has been closing in on Leclerc. Yellow flags behind and it's Alex Halbon losing an engine in his first race for Ferrari. Engine's gone, guys. Sorry. And you hear the radio and some things never change. It was looking up for Ferrari with Halbon. And now they don't have a single car in the points uh, as Yuri Vips has had a bit of a rough day to say the least here in Austria now. Very unfortunate for Abon. I actually feel really bad for him in his video game character. Uh, we continue to focus in on our race. Our pit window is about to kick off here in the next few laps at this point. But it, right now Leclerc is only about a second and a half in front of of Dragovic Jackson already in for his third and final stop. He will now go on to softs, for, or sorry, go on to mediums from softs. Gastly, uh, Behrman is in, in as well. They're all on the same idea and, and strategy. They're going to be putting on mediums. Norris will be pitting here momentarily as he goes around in that Lamborghini, having a really solid run. Lando Norris is for this uh, brandly new Lamborghini buying out the Lotus team, of course. Uh, so really solid first race for that team after they left Williams Lamborghini uh, at the end of last season here. Now, as we continue to try and close in on Dragovic and Leclerc, who are right there together, but with 10 laps to go, we're going to go through the grid. What a fascinating race we have on our hands here in the season opener in Austria. Leclerc leads over the pair of Red Bulls. We're seeing the soft tyre struggle after four to six laps and the medium prevails from that point on. It creates strategy and also tyre management for the first time in years, Crofty. Uh, I personally love it, but I wonder what others think of it. This tyre will be used two more times before a final decision is made for the rest of the season. Callie Mayer having a great run for Trackhouse, currently in fifth, with both female drivers on the grid in the top six. Lovely stuff. Chadwick having a great race as, uh, as Doohan pits. There is so much strategy. And of course, drivers who've been on softs all race now go to the mediums and they hope to close in on, on the drivers on softs by the end of the race. Um, Oli Behrman, the rookie now into ninth, a solid first race to kick off his F1 career today. Quiet but consistent. And here we go, Crofty Leclerc is coming into the pits from first. And there you see, Leclerc is going to box there just in front of Felipe Dragovic, who's going to stay out an extra lap. I'm going to come in and follow Leclerc as well. So we're going to be putting on softs. We've been running mediums all race long. We'll come in, put on a fresh set of soft tires. So the question is... Are we going to see what everybody else at the early part of the race saw on the softs where they, they fire off really well, but they fall off after four to five laps and they fall off hard? Will that give Aiden Jackson a potential chance to make up a bunch of time on mediums as he sets the quickest lap of the race on the mediums? Or is he going to have to struggle through the lap traffic that he's going to have to work his way through? That might be the difference maker now. As we come through to cross the line, Dragovic as well just exiting the pits now. Out of turn one, look at the gap on the track map. Leclerc gets a huge gap right there, about three seconds just about on uh, Felipe Dragovic there. Actually, just over three seconds. So is there enough time for Dragovic to close the gap? We just can't get there. We're too far away. We're not going to get to these two uh, unless they get together and they start racing, really. So Jackson into P4, six seconds back. Russell all the way 15 seconds back after that here. Now you can just see how things get spread so far out. Uh, so I, I don't know if it's better or not with this tire. Maybe things really interesting as we set briefly uh, the quickest lap of this Grand Prix. Hopefully that will stick here now as battles are happening all over this track again. Jamie Chadwick under attack from Behrman. Chadwick on the softs and it seems like even late in this race maybe the mediums are kicking in. I don't know. Behrman actually cannot complete the pass and Jack Doohan is now starting to put some pressure on him. So you have to wonder maybe as this track has built rubber over the course of the race it seems like maybe yeah the softs might be the way to go. In these closing moments there Doohan up the inside of the rookie of Behrman throwing all of the pressure on the rookie but Behrman fends it off he stays in p9 as we cut back to myself it's just about really bringing it home at this point Jackson is not gaining a lot of time he's actually losing because he's also having to navigate some of the traffic uh, that do have blue flags in front of him but it's not quite enough for him but the gap is dramatically decreasing between Leclerc 
and Drogovic only a second and a half between the two drivers coming to two laps to go and now the gap is under a second look at the timing seven tenths of a second six tenths of a second now half a second as they approach the end of this lap coming to two laps to go Drogovic has made up a massive amount of time one lap fresher tires is all he has but he has now gotten to the back of Leclerc who wants to return to the top step of the podium with what would be his third team of his career but here comes Felipe Drogovic alongside Leclerc into turn one two laps remain here in the Austrian Grand Prix and their wheel to wheel through turn one they avoid contact they keep it clean and now the Brazilian versus the Monaco driver they're gonna drag race up the elevation a Williams Audi there in front of us a sister car to of course Red Bull Leclerc goes defensive and a switch back from Drogovic he'll go around the outside a bit of contact there again between the two what a move from the Brazilian Drogovic takes control and he's gonna drive off in the distance from Leclerc who drops down to second place in these closing two laps of this Austrian Grand Prix and that was all she wrote Leclerc just doesn't have enough to stick with Drogovic who just seemed to manage his tires better in these closing moments of this Grand Prix final lap underway and Drogovic is now gone lights out see you later as Drag Jackson is eight seconds behind me at this point and finally he has clear traffic between himself and I but obviously way too far gone way too far back and you can see he is closing now 8.5 8.4 is actually pretty quickly closing but it doesn't really matter it's all Felipe Drogovic here today for the second season in a row he is going to win the Austrian Grand Prix he rounds the final turn round one of the season goes to Red Bull and Felipe Drogovic Let's go, Felipe. Great job. Let's celebrate tonight. Yeah, boys. Come on. Thank you. Drogovic celebrates as we'll come through to cross the line for P3, bringing Red Bull Audi two podium finishes in their first race together. It's a strong start for this new partnership with Ascension Supplier, but hopefully it will continue as Lando Norris and the Lamborghini will get driver of the day. For the team from Milton Keynes, then, after a quality performance. Tell me, Ant, how do they manage to achieve this win? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalize on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Looking aside from pit strategy, uh, Felipe Drogovic realistically led only two laps today, and of course, it was two laps that really mattered. Of course, the final two laps of the Grand Prix. Big shout out to Felipe Drogovic, able to pull off the win here today uh, from Austria in the season opener. And we, we saw him start out last season hot, and then he just didn't quite have enough to hang with me. Is this a new Felipe Drogovic this season? We saw Aiden Jackson, of course, a couple seasons ago, went winless while Albon dominated and won the championship, and then he comes back last season and wins seven races in a title. So, we know it can be done where a driver can, can you know, have a bit of an off season and then find it going into the next season. But uh, that now matches his most wins in a season, of course. One win two seasons ago, one win last season, one win this season. Norris and Lamborghini P10, Behrman, Chadwick, the two full-time rookies right there. Uh, ninth and 10th for them, while the other one, Zane Maloney, in 14th. But honestly, decent for a Williams Audi. Yuri Vips down in P12. And of course, that means no Ferrari. In the points today, Albon was looking strong while Vips just really struggled. Let me know what you thought of the tires. Next episode is back to normal tire tires for the French Grand Prix. I'll see you guys then for round two. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.